Eiffel. London, 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 London. This is Coogan Cassius for iFilm London. We're at the Liverpool Hilton here, head of prize fighter this week at the Olympia. Um, just been announced on the undercard of Carl Froch and Youssef Mack. Tony Bell, you will face Roberto Bellonti, um, Argentinian opponent. Can you tell us a little bit about him, Tony, uh, for people that are not familiar, familiar with Bellonti? Yeah, I wasn't familiar with him, to be honest, too much until I had a good look through the rankings and uh, we came across him. He was the highest av available ranked opponent. So he's number six with the WBC. He's in the top. He's in all of the top ten uh, governing bodies, and he's uh, he's highly dangerous. He's got 30 wins. I think it's 21 by KO with one loss, and the loss was in his fourth pro fight, which he later avenged. So we're uh, looking at him. You know, he's a seasoned operator. He's highly dangerous with both hands, but uh, I feel his weakness is his defence. And the only way I'm going to get to that weakness is putting the pressure on him and uh, hunting him down. So I'm looking forward to this fight. I really am. It's, uh, it's a different match from the uh, Edison Miranda match. It's another step up the ladder, but it's uh, it, it means using different tactics, using a different game plan to take this fighter out. And uh, I believe it's a good fight to have. Um, Eddie Hearn was saying in the press conference that um, obviously this is, is a possible route towards that WBC uh, light heavyweight title. So, I mean, at least with this, you sort of can map out where you're going, can't you? So obviously if you come through this, there possibly might be another final eliminator before hopefully getting a crack next year? Oh, listen, it's, uh, I'm just happy that I'm fighting all the time. I'm, uh, I'm very active at the moment. Uh, you've heard Eddie today, I fight this, and then he's looking at it again in February in Liverpool. So, uh, listen, I'm thrilled to be, uh, be active. That's all I've ever wanted in my career, was to be active all the time, boxing regularly. You know, it's funny that I've never boxed more than six times a year, even when I was having four-rounders, and I had eight four-round fights. So, it's, uh, it's very exciting to be fighting on a regular basis, as I'm going to be, so... Well, I've just got to keep moving forward and, uh, and look to the next fight. Roberto Bolonti is a dangerous opponent. It's another step in the right direction. He's above me in all the ranking bodies. And uh, I'm looking forward to going out there and making a statement. You know, I need to go out there, look good and, uh, and get rid of Roberto Bolonti. Um, what's really interesting is this press conference really hasn't really got anything to do with you because this is for prize fight and Rocky Fielding, but everywhere in this hotel it says the Tony Bellew press conference. <laughs> it's crazy, listen, I don't know where that's come from. It's, uh, it's nuts, but it's not my press conference, it's not about me, it's about prize fighting, it's about Rocky. And uh, it, it's, it's, big bill. it's a big bill, mate, it really is. Listen, this is the best prize fighter. I openly said many years ago I wasn't the biggest fan of prize fighter, but what I am a fan of is where it takes fighters after they compete in it, because every fighter goes on to bigger and better things who fights in prize fighter. I mean, I think the only guy who didn't was Oval McKenzie, and that's because no one wants to fight him besides the dope that you're interviewing now, and I went and fought him twice. So uh, everyone seems to go on. You know, you look at the likes of Gavin Rees, European champion. You know, all these guys they move on. Martin Rogan. You know, it's crazy. Audley Allison fights for a world title off the back of prize fighters. So it's it's really amazing what can happen with prize fighters, and it, it gets it back on in your local pubs. Prize fighters shown in every local boozer, and that's what boxing's about. It's about getting boxing back to mainstream TV, back to big all these people being interested. And it's down to also the production of Sky because they put it together and it's great. Everyone's got a little story coming into this prize fighter. You've got three former British, well, three British champions there in Sykes, Crawler, and Derry Matthews. You've got guys who, 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 you know, you'd think really shouldn't be in it, but they are because they've got something to all got something to prove against each other, and they've all got. You can all see where prize fighter leads, and prize fighter leads to bigger and better things. And listen, fair play to match room. And fair play to every fighter who sat on that table today who's taking it because this is the best prize fighter that I have seen and this is going to be brutal. Don't turn up in a white shirt because you're going to get blood sprayed on you if you're ringside in a white shirt. So, uh, listen, I'm looking really forward to it. It's an exciting night ahead. If you get any blood on me, I'm sending you the bill for dry cleaning. I don't know who you know, but with them jeans on and that coat, you must know someone really big and really strong. So I'll tell you what, I'll just pay it because you know him. Are you, are you knocking my dreams because I've got rips in them? Jesus Christ, son, you look like you've had a fight with the Essex Lion. <laughs> Which was a myth, by the way. There was no such thing. I told you it was a myth. I told, it was just because I was there. Everybody thought, you know, this guy's crazy. He's out running at half past five in the morning in Essex. So, you know, I told you I am the Essex Lion. I am the man to be afraid of. Your 
of um, co-headlining, not co-headlining because Carl Frost is fighting for his world title again against Yusef Mech, but uh, your chief support to that to that bill. But next year, I mean, Eddie Hearn's talking about a big show in February at Liverpool Echo Arena. I don't know whether that would be too soon for this fight that could possibly happen for the WBC title, but certainly in next year, you are going to definitely fight for a world title, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, listen, first and foremost, I'm on Carl Frotch's undercard. Carl Frotch is like a British legend. Forget what people want to say that he's not a legend. It's a fact. He's got the best resume in British boxing history. Don't listen to clowns saying that, you know, this guy's not a legend. The guy's a legend. You don't fight eight guys on the spin that he fought and not be a legend. Starting, you know, with the likes of Pascal, to Jermaine Taylor, to Andre Durrell, you know, to Kessler, to Arthur Abraham, to Andre Ward, to Glenn Johnson, all these fights, I've just reeled off guys that are going to be in the Hall of Fame. There's some guys I've just mentioned there, without doubt, they're going to be in the Hall of Fame. Glenn Johnson's going in the Hall of Fame. There's no two ways about it. Andre Ward, he's going in the Hall of Fame. There's no two ways about it. All these guys are great, great fighters, and he's beat them, and he's, you know, I'm on his undercard. That's all I can say. You know, it's Carl's night. It's Carl's, uh, what they say, homecoming. You know, he goes in with Butte and just destroys Butte, an unbeaten fighter. The whole country gets him off against Butte. And when I said to people, Carl will knock him out, they laughed at me. Don't get me wrong. I said he'd knock him out late because I thought he'd wear him down, similar to the way Andrade done. But he didn't. He went in there, took the bull by the horns, and he just smashed him. That was legendary gear. That was legendary material. A resume like Carl Frotcher's. It's an honour to be on the undercard, mate. It really is, and, and I'm looking forward to it. I can't. I really can't wait. Not the buzz in Nottingham Arena is very similar to the Echo Arena. It's set up the same way. It holds a very similar capacity, and uh, the buzz in there, mate, was just was electric. The Butte night. It's the best night I've been to in a live boxing show. So, I'm hoping it's a similar atmosphere, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting involved, knocking out this this Argentinian guy, and then uh, getting ringside again and performing similar acts to what I was performing to ringside for the Butte fight. And is this in tribute to me? Uh, no, mate, in total honesty, I've just been a bit lazy. I need to get a shit. <laughs> I've, got no, uh, I've got no intention of looking like a meerkat like yourself, mate. I just want to keep it real and uh, I don't really want to get a shit much, to be honest. I just, you just call me a meerkat? Uh, he's got a similar look to one, mate. I'm just stating facts here. Come on. Take it come easy. on, come on. State your facts here. Come on. Right. Listen, Tony Bell, you thank you very much for talking to my film, London. I know I'm going to be seeing a lot of you, obviously, this weekend and then... Um, I think we're in Liverpool for Big Pricey uh, next week. Yeah, the only sad thing is my brother gets married on the Saturday, so to my elder brother, I love you, and I'll be at the wedding, and to Pricey, I'm absolutely devastated. But, you know, he'll understand, I've had a chat with him and that, and it's gutted, really. It's the first, I think it's his first pro fight that I've missed, so I'm gutted, but it's just one of them things that my brother gets married, and, and that's how it is. Right, Tony, thank you very much for talking to from London again, and uh, we'll catch up with you real, real, real soon. Keep watching I Film London.